here is the beginning of my turbo downpipe. I need what I need is here you can see where my turbo downpipe is going to be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pie cut some three inch mild steel and it's going to come off real super tight radius and then it's going to come back about five inches where it'll no have another one of these three inch V bands right here for the turbos to hook onto. This is what I was hoping to be able to just buy a pre-bent tight radius three inch piece but yeah they don't make them that tight of a radius so I gotta make my own. Here's another piece. I actually messed up. Um, I cut one side flat, left one side 90 and did the other side uh, 15 degrees. Both sides are supposed to be 15 degrees so yeah I made a few pieces. No big deal. I might actually use these two. Let's see here. Just one handed. Get that out of there. Come on, there we go. I might yeah, actually use some of these other ones if I need to have more distance from here to here. So I'm not sure yet. Here's just setup I'm using, nothing fancy. It's actually not a very good way to do it. It's a uh, DeWalt chop saw. Makes a lot of sparks, a lot of noise, and a lot of mess. You have a lot of cleanup work to do on the pieces here, I'll show you. That's what they look like right there. It does a really bad job. So then you gotta grind all that out. The best method I've found for doing it it's just a drill with a cheapy uh, burr, burr bit on it. I got a couple shapes of these. I think I bought these at Lowe's for like $4, $5 a piece. So they weren't too bad. But they eat, they eat that off really, really quick. And they do a pretty good job at cleaning it up too. So I've tried everything from a Dremel um, I've tried sticking uh, a grinding piece in my uh, drill press. Yeah, that didn't work very well. The drill with the burr on it, the filing bit is the best way I've found so far to do it. And it still takes a while to do it, to do it, and it makes a big mess. So don't do this anywhere where you can't have metal shavings all over the place. You can see right there. Then I have these marked. These are for the out. For some, they're both three inch, but they're not the same. You can look and see. They don't match up quite perfect. So these match up. These are the ones that came with the turbo, with the uh, headers, the turbo headers, and they fit. And they got the same flange on the header, so that's why I got them marked in. And the knees are marked out and these fit the uh, CX racing elbows so I don't want to mix those up I should be using safety glasses for this but engage your safety squints one and this one. You can see how you can get a tight radius using this method. So I 
should be able to get a pretty tight radius. Probably something about like that using this method, which is, which is what I want. So, and then if you ever need to, like let's say you need to come up, but you need a little jog over, and you can do it, you can just adjust these, you can turn that. And you can do uh, pretty complex compound curves with it. And you can see what I was talking about, how bad it leaves that pipe. All the cleanup you got to do on that. I'll do the outside on my uh, bench grinder. That takes that off really quick. And then the inside, I'll use that burr bit like I was showing you. This is just regular mild steel three inch exhaust pipe. Nothing fancy. Nothing high dollar at all. You do want to make sure, another thing, you want to make sure you keep this distance here pretty consistent because this will affect the uh, ultimate radius of your cut of your piece and you also want to make sure that this piece here is perfectly perfectly at 90 degrees to the angle if that makes sense you don't want this pipe twisted off at a, at a different angle because that'll put these off so instead of being a nice consistent bend, it'll want to kind of jog over or do some funny things. Yeah, see I messed that one up. I made it too tight. there that's not right but luckily I have enough pipe I can just try it again and that's the good thing with this pipe is so cheap if you don't get it right as long as you're working in mild steel yeah you can cut another piece you're working in like p304 stainless or titanium yeah that can get expensive quick <laughs> Here is the end result of the pie cut. You can see this is the piece I need. Uh, this is the shorter one, so this goes on this side. Here is the other side. You can see. I started to tack this one together, but my welder sucks. I'm out of gas. So, I'll just take them to work and finish weld them there. And this is the longer one for the uh, passenger side. The reason I have to have two, you can see their, you can see their different links here. The reason I have two different links is if you look at the headers, see this flange ends with the pump, but this one comes out about another inch and a quarter or so so I adjusted that the shorter one goes on this side and the longer one goes on this side so you need the longer leg to come back that both flanges come back to right about here that way the turbos will be uh, pretty symmetrical and where they'll be mounted I'll have room I can put filters on it for when I'm driving on the street because this thing will see some street duty actually more street duty than track duty um but yeah that's that's why they're not the same length so i'm gonna take these to work tomorrow after work i'll get them welded up that way they'll support the weight of the turbo once i get the turbos mounted i then have to figure out a bracing method for them because i'm gonna have a that's a lot of weight to be hanging out here twisted on these headers so i think what i'm gonna do is I'm either going to weld a tab onto the header tube on the primary and one on the housing of the turbo itself and run a support. 
or I'm going to build some kind of uh, brace to maybe run back to this bolt here. We'll run back and then maybe a brace down to one of the old AC bracket mounting points on this side. Then do the same thing on the other side. So all that weight's not resting on the turbos and it's not resting on these pieces. So, because once you get it moving around and you're driving and that's a lot of weight to be swinging in. It tends to crack the uh, headers. But here they are. Not much to it. I always use uh, blue painter's tape when I'm trying to mock this stuff up. Because you can tape it together, get an idea, and actually have the part in your hand. You just got to be gentle with it. See gaps. Those gaps, I close those up. The tape kind of stretches and causes those gaps to open up. But I'm pretty happy with them, so I think they'll work really well. Once I get them on, I'll uh, do another update video. That's it for now.